Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. Coming in with Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 2, Episode 1, Melody Special Delivery. For all of you all that's been hitting us up and saying, uh, y'all gonna do the show or not? It was until this very moment right here that we realized yeah. that we were gonna do it. So, we're late to y'all, but we're on time to us. Yeah. So, while you're here, if you're not a family member, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free 99. It will go up at some point. Yeah. Consider hitting that thumbs up or thumbs down button. At this point, it doesn't even matter. You've already been counted. And if you want to keep up with us on a day-to-day -day or month-to-month, -month, because these shows do have breaks, go ahead yeah. and consider um, following us on Instagram, and that's where you will know the latest and the greatest. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into this episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Yeah. We're kind of, we're summarizing from where we left off last season to where we have become with season two. Melody pretty much tells us at the beginning of this, congratulations to all of you all that knew that I wasn't going to leave my husband before I do. Y'all must be psychic. Y'all need to make some bread over there. No, we knew bullshit <clears throat> when we heard it. Oh, yeah. We knew you, you wasn't going to leave. You could see it from a mile away. Yeah, I mean, and whatever choice you make, that's your decision. That's right. But anybody that knows when someone is fed up, we knew you weren't fed up enough. Exactly. So, yeah, so they're still together. And they're making the best of this situation. They have this beautiful baby on the way. And they're really trying hard to leave the past in the past. You know, Martel has gone as far as giving Mel the passwords to his phone. And she has done the same. So it's not as if he's getting all his control taken away from him. And she could check everything of his. He also has that control with her as mm -hmm. well. So, um, yeah, that's what makes it work. It, yeah. it is what it is. Exactly. So we get to a point where we see oh Sadark. Sadark always comes with the tea, <laughs> coffee, and lattes. Sadark comes over because Mel and Martel have not gotten the baby's room together yet. So he's supposed to be coming over there to help get a little things together. All he did was pretty much spill tea. Look, listen. I'm in a couple of these Facebook groups. They want man, they be letting y'all have, have it. it. Did you see what they did to that girl caught? And Martel did the right thing. He said, you know what? I don't even want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that situation. Where I am right now, we're in a good place. Mm -hmm. And we're going to build from the place that we are right now. So any of that yin, yin, yang that y'all trying to bring around here, I don't even want to hear that. And so, dog, you was kind of messed up for even bringing that conversation up in their home. You know what I mean? If you're out with the boys and y'all just chitter-chatting and you want to get caught up with your dude, yeah. that's another thing. But you're in their good house point. Good point. and you're trying to bring up a conversation like that. Nah, I don't bring that energy in that dog. So later on, we see Mel. She meets up with her brother. And I don't remember if I knew that Mel has siblings or not, but she has a brother that's a school teacher. And he was pretty much like, when his students found out that his yeah, sister was, was being treated up. wrong like that, it was like, what you gonna do? Are you gonna Why let him punk your sister like that? Like, <laughs> you're not checking him. And come to find out, he has had conversations with Martel, which is good. Yeah. That's what big brothers do. Mm -hmm. And Mel and Mart, I mean, uh, Martel, yeah, no. Mel, it's too many freaking M's in the show. <laughs> Mel and her brother have a really, really good relationship. He yeah. is from <clears throat> her father's first marriage. And she is just, I don't wanna say just, but she is a baby. Lord have mercy. How am I going to say this without y'all getting all offended? He got her mama pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mel is here. And they were never married. Yeah. But the siblings seem to have an awesome relationship, which is good. Yeah. So we get to a point where we're starting to deal with this baby shower. We're getting all the pieces of the puzzle together. And Mel is sitting down meeting with her planners for this baby shower, right? They asked for, okay, do we have a definite head count? So, oh, you know, Lord. true to form, you know, this is all scripted. She has to call um, Kimmy, Kimmy. Yeah. to see if her and Maurice will be attending the baby shower. And it was like, yeah, we're going to be there. But how about, about the yeah. other Scots? Yeah. Everybody and this was the introduction to the bullshit. Well, come to find out that... That whole kiss and makeup thing that they did at the reunion, that was very short-lived. And Mel is at a point now where she was like, what we're not going to do is apologize today. 
and six days later be shady on social media. This is not how this going to work. And I agree with Mel mm -hmm. on that one. But I also agree. I see. I follow a lot of this bullshit, and it's all <laughs> of y'all. God doing it. That I don't know good. who did it first, but it's all of y'all. <laughs> but in the, at the same time, like we like we were saying, even last uh, last season, it's trying to pick through what's real and what's fake, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, are we keeping this narrative going between Marceau and Letitia and them just for a storyline to keep us present this season? So, we're going to see. That's, That's all. what I'm going to say. Yeah. So, we're going to fast forward and we're going to get through this baby shower, right? Mel had also mm -hmm. let us know that she she kind of has a relationship with her father that I have with mine. Mm -hmm. Is when, when it's cool, it's cool. But there's long spaces of time where you don't speak, you don't see each other. Yeah. And it almost seems like if Mel doesn't make the first step to contacting effort, him... Yeah. He doesn't make the, the effort, effort to contact her. But when she contacts him, nothing's wrong. He just never, is, mm -hmm. he doesn't reciprocate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So she's at a point where she was like, okay, I want my father in my life, but yeah, I understand I that he's getting. I don't want to beat getting, him up to do it. Yeah. yeah. And then you also battle him with the fact of, okay, they're getting older. So what harm is it for me to have to do that? But at the same time, that telephone accepts inbound and outbound. Um, that's right. So, but, it's, but it's the same old story that we hear over and over. And, you know, getting older, I kind of understand because they were treated that way. So sometimes man. we can kind of assume that somebody, if they were we treated... Yeah, we, they, we, they know how to parent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or if you got treated that way coming up, as far as your father wasn't active in your life, contacting you and stuff like that, that it will automatically make you do that for your, your child. child but I, I guess in experience it seemed like there was a cutoff in generation of that happening because like and like in our generation you kind of hear us saying that we want to be better than our parents but kind of going back they, it's almost like they didn't they were they were never trying to be better it just was trying they were to existing yeah just we just gonna as long as i raise y'all and you look somewhat good, that's it. I don't really have to be active in your life. Because after all, my daddy or mom wouldn't act you. So, I don't know. But yeah, that's what I got. So we got this baby shower. And it was a beautiful, beautiful event. It reminded me of a wedding reception. But yeah. it was the grand interest for a baby. There is nothing more beautiful than a baby that is celebrated before they're even here. Mm -hmm. And just showered with love and affection and gifts. And everybody is so excited for the welcoming of this baby. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more beautiful than that. So you had a room full of love. All the people that loved them came together just to celebrate baby hope. Mm -hmm. So within this celebration, of course, you know, you get you get a little bit of a drama, right? So Kimmy is there. Kimmy has a conversation with Mel and was like, it's it's nice in here, but it just seems like a couple face, people are missing. A couple missing. faces are missing in here. <laughs> and Mel was like, mm, no, everyone that I invited right. is here. She said, yeah, I knew you would say some mess <laughs> like that, but you know what I'm talking about. So Mel explains to Kimmy, and, and then it kind of made me like, did Kimmy really know that they fell out again? Or was it just like, a surprise, I thought you it? would be over that by now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But she was like, no, what you're not going to do is apologize to me six days later, be re we can't talk today retweeting negative things about me and then marceau over there just doing what marceau does i love marceau though. yeah <laughs> um so no they wasn't invited and i don't feel no kind of ways about it then we see this girl named destiny destiny and her boyfriend named or husband's name labaric we get introduced to them the Barrick and Destiny were at the game night that I don't remember. Yeah, I, I but we might have took, we took a break. It probably happened around that yeah, time. Yeah, so I don't even know if we yeah. watched that episode or not. I don't remember. Yeah. But um, Destiny and Mel has become really, really close. So she kind of was like hosting and keeping the flow of the baby shower <laughs> coming along and whatnot. She ended up having a conversation with Kimmy, and she lets Kimmy know that she was offended. That at game night, <laughs> you said that you didn't know us, but my husband makes good chicken. Yeah, I didn't understand that And Kimmy all. had the same look on her face that I had on my face. Like, 
That's not it's, an insult. Like that's not a read. That's not a dig. That's not nah, a nothing. So we're getting offended because I don't know you. <laughs> she knew you, and she was just trying to downplay that she didn't know y'all. So then we continue with the baby shower, and there comes a time where they're giving out, you know, probably like door prizes and whatnot. So they sponsored a gift of a dinner at their barbecue spot, right? And she was like, yeah, and they'll get a free meal to our barbecue. Um, um, shout out to Kimmy. They try to shave my husband and whatnot. Tell me he made good chicken. Uh, like, and In the confessional, Kimmy was like, okay. <laughs> but I don't know y'all, though. <laughs> I don't know y'all. But it's such a, but it's such his life, though. It's like, I got to, well, before I talk about life, like I said, I think that part was just inserted for... To get us introduced yeah, to them. Yeah, to introduce them. to be. It don't feel real. Ain't, ain't nobody getting offended because they don't, because you don't, because I, I say I don't know you. I mean, they don't, what? The only, There's a whole lot of people I don't know and a whole lot of people that don't know me. Yeah. So I'm going to get offended. Cause I'm, I'm offended. only going to be offended if you really do know me and now you're trying yeah. to play me. Yeah. But if she really don't know you, that's not a read. That's not a dig. Nah. And so to I, say that he makes good chicken. That ain't a dig either. That's a good thing. That's some good skit. Yeah. Matter so. of fact, she just gave... It ain't like she made a negative review on Yelp about the chicken. Yeah, she so gave I, good press. So, yeah, I think it's a part of a little manufacturing script. In the script it had now. to be. Yeah. So, come to find out within this baby shower, everything was going off without a hitch. Reminded me so much of my freaking wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that at the end of everything, her father didn't show up. Mm-hmm. And it's like... I actually thought he was coming, though. I did. I thought he was coming. And you could tell that Mel was hurt because she was making excuses for him. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, he, he told me that he had other obligations. And because we're so much alike, I get it. No, Mel. At your father's age, what obligations do he have? Not even trying to be funny that he can't move around. Yeah. If he's an entrepreneur, I'm pretty sure... He can shake and move something to someone mm -hmm. else. Matter of fact, you have a whole lot more wiggle room to move Skip down the way when you're an entrepreneur. I but, mean, what are you doing that you can't be there for your daughter? But it seemed like he just didn't come and didn't let her know he wasn't coming. Probably did. So it kind of seemed like he that laid her familiar. on. Yeah, so it sounded like he laid her on to make her believe that he was going to be there. Because it seemed like she was looking for him. But also had the reservation, like, if he don't show. I'm not going to be hurt. Yeah, exactly. Which is still not good. Yeah, either. I understand that, too. Yeah. Um, But within the baby shower, let me get to this one part. And I think this was all editing and for the cameras and whatnot. There was a part where Martel's mom and Mel's mom were sitting down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were having a conversation about, they look <clears throat> like they're in a good place. And Martel's mama was like, yeah, I, as long as yeah. you just let them do them, but stay, yeah. we just stay out of it, they're going to be okay. So Mel's mom lets Martel's mom look. Oh, yeah. I talked to him yeah, quite had, a few I had, times. I had a supper conversation. She said, mom oh, was you, like, oh, you did? Oh, you did? You talked to him? <laughs> oh, you, yeah. And the camera was just doing what the camera does. Yeah. I think that was all editing. I think they had that conversation and moved right along to the next day. I don't think they got no issues with each other. I really don't. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, um, it was cute though. Because especially, <laughs> especially if it would have been an issue if Montel had came back and said that Mel's mama had disrespected him and he don't like what she was saying then. It would have been a problem then because, yeah. yeah, mama and them boys, we don't want we don't want to go in that road no, right there. No, we don't. We don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So let's go ahead and talk about Martel. Martel is still in therapy. Wonderful thing. I think more black men should go to therapy to work out some of the, the kinks in it. Even if you don't think you have any kinks, hell, even Alexis needs to go to the shop every now and then to get the computer. And, and, I, and I want to and I want to genuinely commend him because yeah. of sticking with it. Because I thought last season that he just did it just to smooth things over, just smooth higher. things over. But it seemed like he genuinely wants to change. So I'm gonna stick with that statement right now as I watch <laughs> the rest of the season because I made statements before on here and then they just like make a whole left turn. But I do appreciate it, bro, that you went counseling and that it looks like it's making a difference in your life. It does. Yeah. It does. So his um, counselor was like, you know, we need to revisit 
about this conversation we had about your father not being a part of your life growing up and how mm-hmm. that's made you the man that you are today because you're still fighting against the man he was to yeah. become everything that he wasn't. Mm-hmm. How do, do you reconcile that with your heart? And he said something so powerful. He was like, it's almost like functioning with a half a heart. Yeah. I know he's there, but his part isn't functioning with me. Yeah. And I was like, dang, but come mm-hmm. to find out and... I remember this, but kind of not. Martel's father was in prison a lot. I did mm-hmm. remember that. But here's the part that really got me. Yeah. Martel said that there were periods of time where his father was not in prison. And he didn't even and know. And he didn't even know. Yeah. So he didn't even try mm-hmm. to be a part of his life back then. And he was like, you know, mama held it down, did what she needed to do. Yeah. But daddy was absent voluntarily Mm -hmm. when he was out. Daddy was a rolling stone. So I was like, dang, that's kind of jacked up. And he was like, you know, in his upbringing coming up in the hood, you saw fathers, but But, they weren't doing or nurturing or, you know, bringing up, as the old people would say, their boys and whatnot. You know, we just another dude, like another male figure. So I was like, dang. Yeah, so it caused him to grow up, you know, having to be this person, you know, that his father didn't show him to be. And like he was saying, like he mm-hmm. said, I I don't feel like nothing is missing. Because I guess you coping with your father not being there for you. So it's like, okay, I grew up and I got a multi-million dollar business. I got a family. So I was able to give my family something that he was not able to. So technically, I really don't, I really didn't really need him. And he was like, well, if God was just to show me of what my life would have been like if my dad was present, maybe I can go and confront him. But I was like, no, you still can confront him because he was supposed to have been there because you are we if your parents are not there, it is still stuff missing in you. Oh, absolutely. Even when you get older, because they were supposed to impart some things in your life, but thank God that a lot of us have been able to survive and really grow mm-hmm. and become the people that we are, you know. In spite of. In spite of. But having a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. Like a lot of these things that we could have been taught to avoid or navigated through so that we don't have to go through the rough side of the mountain like grandma used to say. Yeah. Wasting time doing that. You know, wasting time making mistakes. We don't even want to go down that rabbit hole of some of the things that you could just go straight on to instead of going all the way around here and here trying to get there. But but like I said, you know, they grew up without the tools either. Mm -hmm. So... So everybody is trying to function with so what they know. So that generational curses all yeah. the way down, you know. Yeah. That's... So it does. It makes you look at them a whole lot differently. Not trying to make them pay for what they did. And like, and I got what Martel was trying to say. Like, pretty much, I'm not trying to reconcile with my father so that he can correct something because that time has passed. Passed. Yeah. But let's go ahead and work forward, but still identify. Yeah. What happened in the past? We're not asking you to fix it. Because mm-hmm. that's impossible. But yeah. let's just go ahead and move forward. Yeah. Be a man of what you say. And let's just move from there. Exactly. So later on in the baby shower, we see that Maurice is having a conversation with Martel. <laughs> and this episode was actually going really, really, like, well. Like, no, no, no not a whole lot of shame, yet. not a whole lot yeah. of drama. And here it comes. <laughs> Martel lets it slip. He didn't let it slip out of his mouth. This was deliberate. And he was like, Marceau gets on his little rants and he's sending me things talking about some, I got receipts of this and, and a male's mama this and we talk about mamas and kids. But do you want me to let it not be known that Letitia had a liposuction and a butt lift? And I'm like, that's not even a read these days. Everybody Them has doing, it. Yeah, let me get my new. coins up <laughs> and I might get my plumped up a little bit more too. Um... <laughs> So I'm like, that's not even a real read. But I'm just was, saying, you do it, make it look real. So, matter of fact, I ain't talking to you. I'm just talking to anybody. Oh, I'm just saying, you know, just talking saying. to anybody that do it, just make sure it look real. If I was to get anything more than what I have, it's not gonna look real. <laughs> <laughs> so leave it alone. Leave it alone. Yeah, leave it alone. But um, I get this waist snatch though. Huh? Mm-hmm. Now that I don't have the surgery and these fibroids gone, a while I, I don't know what you talking about. Your waist look fine to me. Uh, it's hey. But while we was gone, y'all, uh-huh. I don't had a whole surgery and everything. God is good, ain't it? Uh-huh. But um, 
So they continue with this conversation and Martel is just going in. And then he turns his sights to Maurice and he was like, I didn't appreciate what you were trying to do on that stage. <laughs> where every time me and my wife try to say something, you want to cut us off because you want to take their side. And Maurice was like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. What I pretty much was trying to do was neutralize the situation. Yeah, for the two people, like, two people like, I love. Yeah, he was like, I don't want y'all up there <clears throat> fighting. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interject myself. It just be like, just just stop, y'all. Just mm -hmm. stop. So that's pretty much all we got out of this episode was a beautiful baby shower that they yeah. are still together, still rocking it out. Uh, forget what you see on social media. We're at a point with this show that we just going to watch it. Yeah. And I, and I try to decipher what's real and what's not because at this point, you, I, you, you just don't know. I just, I just hope genuinely that they are in a really good place. I hope so. I just hope it's not an act for the show. Uh, but he did. It seemed like it was real. If it if it's not, they they put on a good put a good act. Cause I always want to see, especially black black yes. marriages to survive. Because it's always um, statistical that we don't make it because of infidelity, money, and drugs, drugs or bad communication. So I really do want them to make it. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they are a beautiful family, I they really do. Yeah, family. they are a beautiful family, and I do want them to make it. Yeah. But are we going to be watching? And we're going to see y'all next week. Straight from the VA. The Dirty, Dirty South. Two up. Two, two down. down. Holla.